Okay, so we're gonna hop back up on the bike and leave um, Orient Bay Station and the lodge behind. Here you can see the sign from the old Royal Windsor Lodge. So it says Orient Bay Cottages and Camping. Uh, here you can see a piece of a sign pole. I got excited there for a second when I saw it, but then noticed there was nothing attached to it. So maybe part of a flanger sign for the crossing. Not sure. Okay. So here the, uh, the siding continues. Just trying to keep my eyes open for things. So while we have a minute here, we should do our usual history lesson. So this line was constructed by Canadian Northern Railway between 1911 and 1914. It was going to be one of the final pieces in Canadian Northern's transcontinental ambitions. The Canadian Northern Railway Company got their start in Manitoba back in 1896 uh, by acquiring some charters and building some lines and things. Here you can see the siding kind of starts to peter out as we pull in close to the bay. And their first big project was constructing a line between the then city of Port Arthur and Winnipeg. Port Arthur is now Thunder Bay. Um, between 1899 and 1902. So this is this is now Orient Bay. So to the north of us is Pijitawabic Bay and this is Orient Bay. So here's the end of the siding and you can see that there's a post there and there's a post here. All right, so as we were zipping along, I noticed these two metal poles sticking out of the ground. I can't get that one out because uh, it's stuck in there, but I was able to get this one out and we got a flanger sign. So this would have been the flanger sign for the siding here at Orient Bay. So the one on the, I guess, Western side of the, uh, of the switch. Okay, so we're gonna jump up on the bike here and uh, keep moving along here, finish our story. So before we get going here, you can just see the beauty of Orient Bay and you'll see it a little bit better tomorrow with, uh, I mean, I'll throw some footage in here with, uh, um, with the sun out. And so you can kind of see everything illuminated. This is good because we're going this way and uh, we would be shooting right into the sun. But if the sun's out, you'll see all of this very, very beautifully. All right, so as promised, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a view uh, of the, uh, um, of Orient Bay with the sun out is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can see the, uh, the the length of the bay here. It, it does narrow down a little bit. It's a little bit harder to see, but basically you can see Cove Inlet down there, which we're going to be heading towards. You can see the ridges here of the Pijitawabic Palisades. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. You can sort of understand why this was kind of a, uh, a mecca for you know tourists and outdoors people uh, and the reason why they set up things like the uh, the Nipigon Lodge for people to uh, to experience this beauty and it's still beautiful today all right so we'll uh, we'll resume our journey here okay so as I was saying uh, Canadian Northern's first big project was to build a line between Port Arthur and Winnipeg which was completed in 1902 and then after that, they began building lines uh, throughout the prairies um, and then also started building and acquiring lines north from Toronto, eventually reaching into the Sudbury area. Now, uh, eventually Canadian Northern realized that for their line to be profitable, they would have to have a transcontinental connection. Now, the unfortunate problem with that was that Canadian Northern did not want to build this section of line. They did not want to build between the Sudbury area, specifically Ruel and Port Arthur, because it was going to be very, very difficult to build. Case in point, uh, as we uh, admire the beauty of Orient Bay and the Pijitawabic Palisades, as they're called, these big ridges. So this used to be an outlet of Lake Nipigon at one time, and, you know, going back in geological history. And so they didn't want to build this stretch because it was going to be very difficult and therefore very expensive and weren't really sure about the profitability of the line. So they tried to come up with a bunch of arrangements and you know they tried to make a deal with Canadian um, Pacific Railway 
Uh, unfortunately, nothing really, uh, nothing really panned out for them, so they were forced to build. Got it, some more signage here. And we have the whistle marker. So that would have been for the crossing coming up at the uh, at the lodge. Make sure I tilt my head down so you can see it. So unfortunately, they couldn't come up with a uh, some sort of agreement. So Canadian Northern was forced to build, and construction began, as I mentioned, in 1911, and was completed in 1914, New Year's Day, 1914 was when the last spike was driven. Now, um, unfortunately, the construction process, which you can see again is very difficult. This whole thing that we've been on, since we turned that corner, this is all rock fill. And you're gonna see all throughout this next section here is just literally rock fill uh, throughout the bay here. And so construction costs, uh, of areas like this and the mountains of British Columbia and coupled with a lot of the issues that developed as a result of World War I, Canadian Northern went bankrupt. So in 1917, they had to be taken over by the Canadian government. And a year later, they were forced to merge or amalgamate or whatever descriptor that you want to use with a bunch of other Canadian government owned bankrupt lines known as the Canadian Government Railways. And that merger produced the Canadian Government, uh, sorry, the Canadian National Railways. And so the process of nationalization um, took five years. And so uh, it was finally completed in 1923 with the absorption of the Grand Trunk Lines. And the name of this line changed at that time. It went from the Nipigon subdivision of Canadian Northern Railway to the Dorian subdivision of Canadian National Railways. And so the Dorian subdivision continued uh, up until 1960 when CN did a, uh, went through a major reorganization. They changed their name from Canadian National Railways, plural, to Canadian National Railway, uh, adopted their modern logo, which they still use today, and they reorganized this line. And so the Dorian subdivision was merged with the more easterly Kinghorn subdivision and the whole line became known as the Kinghorn. Very noisy transport coming. And that continued until 2005 when Canadian National decided to discontinue service on this line. And beginning in 2008, they began ripping up the rails and that process was complete in 2010. Actually, transports are killing me here. Pause for a second. And so, um, actually there's pictures out there that were taken in uh, the spring of 2010 that were taken right in this area here, um, just further to the north up co closer to uh, um, the, the start of Orient Bay Station where you can actually see uh, them removing the rails. Uh, so here we have a culvert. So this is a uh, segmented concrete culvert. Um, there's no marker here, so we don't know the mileage, but we know we just left milepost 91. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, we're going to drop down and have a look at what's going on here. Okay, so we made our way down here on the south side, and you can see the culvert. It's about a four foot diameter culvert. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's some deterioration around kind of the uh, uh, the opening here. Um, yeah, it does look like it's missing part of its. I got to yell over the transports here. I got it. Looks like it's part, missing part of its 
it's flange. Usually the uh, this end here is kind of the uh, um, the flanged end, and uh, it looks like usually it's it's uh, more pronounced. You can see all the rock that they've stacked up um, uh, alongside the uh, the opening here to kind of funnel the water in and to uh, sort of uh, protect the sides. It's quite a bit of it stacked up. You can see it's been there for a while. You can see all the moss and stuff that's growing up along there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, jump the grade and go take a look at things on the north side. All right, so we're over here on the north side. This is about as close as we can get, um, just simply because of the lay of the land here. Um, we can't get any closer. Here you can see the waters of Orient Bay. Um, this side of the culvert, again, looks like it's in pretty good condition. You can see, again, the age, all the moss that's kind of growing up. You can see more of this sort of stacked rock uh, along here. To, uh, uh, to protect the, uh, the opening here. Uh, obviously you would have winds and waters that would be kind of splashing up against the, uh, um, uh, splashing up against this area um, with the, uh, the winds coming off the bay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna hop back up on the grade and just continue our journey um, southward. Um, uh, our next stop is coming up in a little bit towards Cove Inlet. 